So, this right here is Stranger in a Strange Land, one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, it's about a guy uh, named Valentine Michael Smith, otherwise known as Mike, who, uh, also known as the man from Mars, because he's raised on Mars by Martians. In this book, there are Martians. Um, and, it, like, his his parents crash land on Mars, and, and they all die, and he's raised by Martians. And then the second expedition to Mars shows up uh, from Earth, and they, it's like 20 years later or something, they bring him home, uh, or what they think is home, he thinks of Mars as home, um, and, you know, they say, hey, look, we've got this man from Mars, and he, he you know, kind of overturns a lot of uh, uh, Earthling conventions because he has this Martian mindset, and uh, he starts teaching people what it's like to think as a Martian, uh, and, and he also sort of learns what it means to be human and stuff like that. And one of the Martian philosophies that he comes back with is uh, uh, the saying, Thou art God. And that saying does not mean in English what it means in Martian. And they, they state this flat out in the book. Um, but But... It does have a meaning that kind of speaks to, to uh, well, some of the, th I mean, th this book ultimately led me to atheism. Uh, it, it, I, it sort of started me out on a kind of pantheism that I abandoned rather quickly, but uh, it, it did lead me to atheism. It's, it's hard to explain what thou art God means, and part of the reason is that I've never 100% fully understood it. And the reason I've never fully understood it is because of the wording. The, the, those words are just not good for explaining the concept. Um, because, well, I personally have a kind of mental block when it comes to the word God. You say God, my first thought is deity. My first thought is magical sky fairy. You know, that's what God means to me. So when you say, thou art God, I have to wrestle with my brain to not think of a magical sky daddy. I, it's just, it's really hard for me not to think in those terms because of that word. And I think, I think that this is part of why we have such a difficult time discussing things with theists. Because... We hear different things when we say different words. I mean, come on, how many times have we had to argue over the definition of agnostic or atheist itself? I mean, when I say atheist, I mean, I don't believe in a god. And that's all I mean. But when a theist hears atheist, generally speaking, they tend to hear god denier, god disbeliever. I mean, how many times have we had to argue over the, the definition of the word skeptic? You know, I say I am a skeptic, meaning that I do not believe something without proper evidence, that I will continue to doubt until I get proof. And uh, they hear, again, denier. You know, they hear naysayer. They, they hear uh, a skeptic is someone who says, nuh uh, not show me evidence, not. Uh, you know, prove it to me, they hear, I don't believe it. And, you know, and, and not just I don't believe it, but I refuse to believe it. They, they hear, I will not believe what you have to say, no matter what you say. It's not, give me evidence. It, you know, it's not, give me something more than faith. Not to them. To them, a, a skeptic or an atheist is someone who says, no, I will never believe no matter what. And it doesn't work like that. That's not what the word means. So, I, I mean, I've gotten video responses from people where they will take my argument. And, I, I mean, sometimes I've even specifically said what I mean by certain words. And they will start their video by saying, well, the word you use doesn't mean this, that, or the other thing. Here's the definition I want to use. Now, here's what your argument means with my definition inserted. And it's like, really? Really, you're, you're, you're going to go there? You know, you're, you're going to tell me that my argument, my argument, 
has to use your definitions. And a lot of times their definitions are set up in such a way that you can't even make my argument. That my argument is unphrasable with their definitions. And it's just like, you know, there's this communication block. Words are such a problem, you know? And I don't know if this is done on purpose. Part of me, the cynical part of me, thinks it is. Um, another part of me thinks that it's just some weird culture difference, you know? And, and there's not a lot we can do about it. It makes me think that we need more words, you know, so that they can have the word that, that means what they want it to mean, but we can have the word that means what we want it to mean. So that way we can actually have a discussion about the actual topic instead of wrangling over definitions and getting caught up in, like, bad straw man arguments and, and semantics debates. It's, it's such an annoyance. So, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. But I do know that it's a problem, and it's it's one I'd love to see solved someday. Anyway, this is Bionic Dance saying, don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. That, that actually means something this time around. Not that it doesn't anyway, but seriously, it seems like we run on automatic with, with our terminology a lot of the time, that... It, it keeps us from being able to see into someone else's mind, into what they mean. So let's knock that off, huh? Until next time, Spell... Spello? Wow. Man, I got through, what, a seven-minute video without stumbling over word until the very fucking end? How good am I? Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance. Catch you later. Please take the time to rate this video. And hey, if you dig what I do, subscribe! And please visit my Sazzle store, where you'll find all kinds of Bionic Dance merchandise! Rating videos has been found to cause fresher breath, enhanced metabolism, and greater sexual magnetism.